How's it going, Rogues Gallery, and welcome to another Shadowverse Deck Tech video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, we are covering one of the breakout hits of the Cosmic Mythos format, Elephant Storm. In particular, this is a little bit different than your kind of cookie cutter Elephant Storm list, so be sure to watch on and find out exactly why we made the decisions that we made for this deck. Though, with that said, we do have a deck list in the description down below to good old uh, Bushi Navi. You can go ahead and check that out. And you know what? While you're down there, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. I really, really appreciate all of the support, especially here on the Shadowverse Evolve content. It is truly one of my favorite games. Absolutely love it. And the support is just awesome. Helping growing the game, helping growing the community. And um, yeah, just, just really loving it. Speaking of which, I do want to co cover a couple quick things before we go on to the deck tech. The first is, we do have a 10 deck deep dive video coming in the pipeline. If you do want to see any specific uh, Shadowverse Evolve uh, crafts and deck techs for the Cosmic Mythos format, let me know in the comments down below, please. But we will have the, the 10 deck deep dive uh, very, very soon. And we also have some gameplay featuring a guest that I'm sure you will recognize if you are a fan of Shadowverse. With all that said, Let's get on to the Elephant Storm deck tech. All right, so here is our deck. And before we get on with the proper deck, I do wanna say that, like I mentioned at the start, this deck is not your typical uh, forest craft uh, elephant haven list. We have made some alterations. I did see a couple winning Japanese lists that were not playing Silver Bolt. So this is what I would call like a boltless list. However, I still wanted to show you the cookie cutter cards just in case you're like, hey, what does everyone else play? What's like the actual like meta pick, right? What, what's the cookie cutter build? And that would be running three copies of Silver Bolt here. And basically what I'm doing is I, I want to test this version out. It plays some newer cards that I just want to see how they're doing. And since this list won at least a couple events, I wanted to kind of give it give it its paces here. I'm also not running any of the Crystallia cards. So we have a Crystallia Tia here. A lot of decks run a three of her in the uh, in the main deck. Also gives me the opportunity to uh, to uh, uh, flex my uh, my world's uh, 2023 stamped Tias, um, as well as my uh, other uh, other fancy Tias. Typically, they only run one or two of these in in the Evo deck. And then, of course, uh, your Crystallia Lilies, which um, once again, I'm not running any of the Crystallia cards, but a lot of decks run Crystallia. Really good removal. Um, and then we have the two Lily Evos. So these are kind of like some of the big main differences between my version and what a, you know a lot of other versions that you'll see. And one of the reasons I wanted to try this is because I found Silverbolt to be a card that just sits in my hand and does nothing. It's a seven drop, right? And once you get there, it's pretty good. But I've had a lot of the time, um, you know, playing this deck where I get to seven and this card does like four damage or like five damage, and it's like for seven is really not what I want to be doing. Um, and so I wanted to try this version. It feels a little bit more flexible than uh, than the Silver Bolts, but Silver Bolt does give you some good uh, finisher options other than the King Elephant that we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about here. So uh, my uh, current leader of choice is uh, Michelle here. She's cute and has a weird possessed teddy bear or, or something. We have our Evo deck. We'll go over the Evo deck um, you know, as it comes, but we have these beautiful Shadowverse Evolve sleeves. I always like to, to, you know, properly theme my deck. And now we're going to break this deck tech down by card effects, basically. So we have some storm cards to help us push damage. We have uh, removal and bounce targets. Uh, I'm just going to call them, we're going to break it down to bounce targets, uh, cards that bounce, and then removal. So some, some, there's some crossover between them, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it as we go. The first card I wanna talk about though is the titular elephant for Elephant Storm. This is King Elephant. This is the card that makes this deck so powerful. This is our top end finisher. He costs six, but he really costs 10 
for our finishing blow. So he's a six drop, one, one. He evos for four, and that's why I say he costs 10, because uh, we definitely want to evo him. He has storm, which is also part of the elephant storm. A fanfare, select any number of cards on your field, return them to their owner's hands, and give this follower plus X plus X. X equals the number of cards in your hand. Now the Evo version is really important because he basically doubles down on that. We're only running a single copy in our uh, in our sideboard because or in our uh, Evo deck, and that's just because we just need one. This should ki kill our opponent. This should end the game. So the Evo version has Storm and also on Evolve. Give this follower plus X plus X, where X equals the number of cards in your hand. So he basically doubles down on that effect, and he also ignores Ward. So he just punches straight through and just kills our opponent. The ideal situation is we have, you know, seven-ish cards in hand. Give him plus seven from the uh, fanfare. Give him plus seven from the Evo. He is a 15-15 storm that ignores Ward and we just kill our opponent. That, that's the idea, right? He can be a little bit smaller than that. Um, there are ways to chip our opponent down. We'll talk about them. But this is the real breakout card of the deck. This is why this deck is so scary and strong and it will continue to be so for quite a while. So, yep, we're running those. Next up, we have some other great Storm cards. Some decks run fewer versions of this, but this card does see a lot more play later on. So you definitely want to pick up your copies of Sukuna, Brave and Small. It doesn't seem exciting. It's a one drop one one, but it has an Evo for one. And it's the Evo that, that really, really matters here. So the Evo for Sukuna, is uh, she becomes a 2-2 with Storm. We have a lot of Storm stuff in the deck, not just the Elephant, other things as well. So she has Storm and then she has on Evolve combo three, give her plus one, plus one. And then uh, combo five, give her plus three, plus three. So she's basically a two drop, five, five Storm if you have that combo five. Combo three is pretty easy to pull off. Combo five is a little bit trickier, but we'll talk about how you're able to do that. So we're running two in the Evo deck because we do want to Evo her uh, a decent amount here and then for the main deck we are running uh the full the full shebang here just so we can kind of maximize um maximize on our potential to draw sukuna uh, we also have a fan favorite storm card silent suzuka she's a four drop for one uh she can evo for two or race if you have a carrot in your evo deck we are not running any carrots uh race for one and she has storm so base level she's a four drop for one storm really really good uh, and she also can Evo. So we're running two of her, the base versions. And then for the Evo version, we're just running a single copy of the Evo Silent Suzuka. And on Evo, she becomes a 5-2. And on Evolve, select an enemy follower on the field and put on top of the, their deck. So she doubles as removal. She's a five storm, you know, to face. Or, you know, you can, if you really need to jam it into an enemy, you can do that. But she also bounces something to the top of our opponent's deck really strong and we're running a single copy of her in the evo deck and th that's going to be the storm package for the storm deck really strong stuff you can do a ton of damage we basically want to chip our opponents down until we can get into a range where we feel comfortable killing them in one shot with elephant all right now we have a bunch of cards that i'm going to call bounce targets so bounce basically is shorthand for returning a card to uh, a player's hand right and these are cards that all cost one that we want to play and then use another card effect to return them to our hand and then play them again and get a lot of uh, value out of that. Most of them care about leaving the field, which includes returning to your hand. And we'll talk about the cards that help us do that in just a second. So our removal version is Elf Child May. She's just a great card, one drop, one, one. Uh, there are versions of the deck where you can run three of these. Uh, I like running two here, but three, three also can work. Uh, fan first, select an enemy follower on the field and deal it one damage. When this card is returned to hand from field, select an enemy fall on the field and deal it one damage, right? So a good play pattern here is play her, deal one damage to something, play an effect that returns her to your hand, deal one damage to something, and then you can play her again and you can keep kind of doing that if you keep keep having those effects. So yeah, she's really good. Next up we have a forest staple harvest festival. It's a one drop amulet. Um, you can pay one, activate it, put this card in your cemetery, give your leader one health. So, you know, heal for one. And then when this leaves my field, draw a card. So once again, you want to play this and then bounce it to your hand and draw a card and then play it and bounce it and draw a card. And then you can crack it at some point to gain a life and then draw a card. Really good value for all of our cards that care about the number of cards in our hand. If we were running the silver bolt in the, uh, in the deck here, 
then uh, you know this is the card, one of the cards that helps fuel that. So uh, three Harvest Festivals, really good stuff. Uh, next up, we have one of the newer cards. This is um, Inviolable Verdancy, also known as Spring Green Protection. But I like using the Code Chaos uh, CC alternate art because she's, she's very pretty. Uh, but they both do the same thing, and you can only have three of them in your deck either way. So it's a one drop uh, amulet. You can pay one and activate it, put into the cemetery, select a follow on your field, give it plus one defense. Combo three, give it plus one attack as well, which is uh, not too bad. Just give something plus one, plus one. It's okay. And then when this leaves the field, put a Fairy Wisp token into our EX area. And so a Fairy Wisp is a very simple little card here. It is just a zero drop, one, one. And this is a great way to build up our combo count. So bouncing the Verdancy back and forth and putting a bunch of these in our EX area, I like the, like the Japanese version too, putting a bunch of these into our EX area is great. And then we can play a bunch of them and then do, do a lot of shenanigans, right? It's one of the ways to easily build up our combo and make our um, uh, Sukuna hit like an absolute truck. So yeah, this is a good one. Doesn't draw us a card, but uh, makes a little uh, zero cost one one in our EX area. And then finally, not exactly a bounce card, but still kind of a bounce card. We run a one of Wood of Bramble. So it's another one drop amulet. It says fanfare, summon a fairy token. And so a fairy token, if you don't know, very, very simple, is uh, just a one drop one one, right? Um, yeah, very, very simple, one drop one one. So you summon a one drop one one for one, that's okay. Uh, combo three, give it rush, which is pretty good. Means it can attack an enemy follower. And then at the start of our main phase, destroy this card. Yeah, that that that's the effect. While it's on start, at the start of our main phase, destroy this card. Now we have a separate separate effect. While this card is on our field, our followers have follower strike deal two damage to the enemy follower, which is really really strong. Remember, on strike you do that effect before damage is calculated. So if that two damage would kill the enemy follower, the enemy follower does not hit you back which is really, really relevant. Um, and why I call this a bounce target is because it says at the start of your main phase, destroy this card. So you wanna play this card, get your fairy, do all of your shenanigans with their attacks, and then you can bounce this back to your hand to do it again, right? Because it typically only sticks around for one turn. So that's why it's a bounce target. You don't really get super value from returning to your hand, but you do get value for playing at fanfare. So pretty good, pretty good little like removal card. Um, I can tell that uh, we're, we're building up a little too much here, so we'll, we'll move that to the side as we talk about our bounce enablers, right? So we are running nine bounce enablers. These are all very, very powerful cards, and honestly, just forest craft staples. We have nature's guidance, simple spell, one drop, select a card on my field, return it to the hand, and then draw a card, right? So we can bounce any of these nice little bounce targets to our hand, and then draw a card, which is great. Um, you just get so much value if you bounce like a Harvest Festival. Draw two cards, pretty good. Uh, so yeah, we're running a full set of those. Uh, now we have Marvelous Sunday. Absolutely amazing card. She's a two drop, two, three. Uh, for one uh, and a one play point um, and a carrot, you can race her. Once again, we're not running any carrots. But on Fanfare, you select another card on your field, put it to your hand, and then heal your leader for plus two. Really, really good against all of the other aggro decks out there and other combo decks trying to get to a nice little life total. So a Marvelous Sunday is great. Sometimes you can even loop Marvelous Sundays, right? You can have a Marvelous Sunday and then play one and bounce one and just kind of get some heals off. Uh, it's, it's, it's great. So yeah, Marvelous Sunday, good for returning stuff. Good for returning herself, but you have to choose another Marvelous Sunday. Can't be the one that you played. Still, really sweet. And then another Forest Craft staple, we have the Ancient Elf. Two drop, two, two, but it's usually like five, five. Two drop, two, two. You can pay one uh, and ev evolve it, which is great. It has ward. And then on fanfare, we're another, return another card from your field to your hand. Give this follower plus one, plus one. So we're running three of these. So it's, it's you know, a base level, a two drop, three, three, bounce a thing to your hand with ward. However, we, we definitely want to evo them. So we're running three copy or two copies in the evo deck, three in the main deck. And what does the evo version do? Well, they become a three, three, still has ward. And on evolve, return another card from a field to the hand, give it plus one, plus one. So basically for the cost of three, you can return two cards on your field to the hand, and then it gets a plus one, plus one for each of them. So it gets plus two, plus two, and it is a three, three on Evo. So it's a three cost, five, five bounce, two things. Uh, really, really good value for this deck in particular. So really, really solid. Um, yep, so that is our little like bounce 
bounce package. Next up, we have a suite of removal. We have a, a decent chunk of removal here. Uh, let's talk about Fashionista Nelcha. Really, really powerful card. Also serves as a buff card. Two drop, two, three. And then you can activate her, but only if you have combo three, which means you've played three cards this turn. Uh, choose one of the following. Select another follower on the field and give it plus two, plus two. Or select an enemy follower on the field and give it minus two, minus two. So she's great at... Th those are permanent, by the way. Not until the turn. Just permanent. So great at killing our opponent's stuff. Great at buffing our stuff. Uh, just a really, really good, really annoying card that is is basically a removal magnet. Your opponent will want to kill this like as soon as they can. So Nelcha, very, very good. We're also running uh, two of Rose Gardener. Uh, this is a starter deck card. You can only get it in the starter deck or promos. It's a three drop, three, three, and you can Evo it for one. And then when you do Evo it for one, it becomes a four, four. And on Evolve, select an enemy fall on the field and return it to its owner's hand. You can only do enemy followers, so you can't bounce your own stuff. And then if you have combo three active, you draw a card. So it's great. You uh, bounce an enemy follower. It becomes a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, obviously has a uh, rush because of the all Evo cards have rush. And then you can bounce a thing, attack into a thing, and then draw a card. It's really, really good value. It's almost like a, like a three for one, right? Bounce your thing, draw a card, and then maybe crash this into another thing. Yeah, it's really good. So running two there. And then we have another one of the new cards uh, from the um, Cosmic Mavo set. We have Cassiopeia, Cosmic Mythos set. She is a five drop, four five, and on Fanfare, select any number of enemy followers on the field and deal X damage divided between them. X equals the total number of cards in your hand and EX area. So she can deal a ton of damage and wipe our opponent's board. She can be a one-sided board wipe. She's very, very strong, and she actually works very, very well with the Verdancy here that puts a bunch of the Wisp tokens in our EX area. So we can put a bunch of Wisp tokens in our EX area, and then we can have cards in our hand as you can play her and do like five damage or, or 10 damage, you know? Um, yeah, great. And so we are running a, a full set of uh, Cassiopeia here. She's really, really solid. And then finally for the removal, we are running Ivy Spellbomb. It's just a three drop, uh, select an enemy fall in the field, deal five damage. And then if you have combo three active, you also deal three, three damage to the leader, which is good. Just kind of chip them down. Yeah, just a really, really solid removal. I can see some versions running three instead of two here. And then finally, we have the uh, draw cards or leftover cards. These are just kind of things that help slow the game down. This is one of the big picks that I saw for this deck that other decks weren't running. I really wanted to test it out to see how good she is. Um, but this is also one of the cards that if you want to run like the more meta version, it's one of the ones that you can cut for something like, uh, like Tia or Lily, right? I think Lily is an easy, easy cut for this if you wanted more removal. So pretty simple card, right? It's a two drop, two one. This is Fita, the Gentle Elf. Um, and when she evolves, we're running two versions in the Evo deck, she becomes a three two. And on Evo, give your leader plus one and draw a card. So this actually really helps us, uh, you know, fuel our hand for effects like Elephant or uh, like Cassiopeia or just, you know, drawing cards to have more cards to play. Uh, and she also heals us, which is also pretty relevant. Healing is, is pretty good here. So yeah, this is one of the, the the picks for this list that I that I didn't see in a lot of other decks, but I really wanted to try out. It's a new card, wanted to try it out. Drawing cards is good, gaining life is good. Uh, it's just three for that ability, right? You play it and you do it, or uh, two and an Evo point if you have an Evo point. So and that rounds out our uh, the rest of our Evo deck. And then of course, simple, just two of Bellringer, right? Uh, zero to ward on uh, last words, draw card. Just a nice little way to, to kind of gum up the board and stall things out. And that is my version of Elephant Storm. Like I said, the other versions that you typically, typically see running around run um, Silverbolt, usually in three ofs. Uh, Tia, usually in three or two ofs. And then also uh, Evo, usually in two or one ofs. I would say probably one of in, the, in this situation. And then Lily, which is just a really good, you know, really, really good removal card. And then usually three main deck, two in the, uh, two in the, uh, in the Evo deck here. And the cards that you would swap out would be something along the lines of, just in case you were wondering, you'd swap out the, the Fitas, you would swap out the Rose Gardeners, and then the rest is kind of up to you depending on what you want to do. I've seen some people uh, not run Sukuna. Um, 
and instead go for the um, the silver bolts. So you could do something like this, right? You can do something like uh, cut the Sakunas, cut the Rose Gardeners, and cut the Fitas, right? And then you can bring in um, maybe even like a, a Bell Ringer Evo, and then like all all or most of all of these cards. And uh, that, that's that's a way to kind of make it into more of a cookie cutter build. But like I said, I kind of wanted to try this. I really wanted to play with some of the new cards like Sakuna and uh, Fita, and um, yeah, it's fun. It's really strong too. Um, but if you want to play with like the more staple deck, cookie cutter deck, well, there you go. And uh, yeah, that is Elephant Storm. It is very, very powerful. Uh, this deck I think will be quite good, at least for a few sets. Elephant is just is just very, very strong. And um, yeah, it's fun. I think this is our first uh, deck tech featuring Forest here on the channel. And I think this is my favorite iteration of Forest so far. I highly recommend checking it out. And it's one of the cheaper decks to build. There's not a lot of super expensive cards in the deck, unless you're like doing some fancy, fancy foiling. But most of the cards aren't too bad. In fact, most of the cards are like silver, gold, and bronze cards. There's not a ton of legendaries uh, in the deck, and the ones that are aren't super expensive. So you have Cassiopeia, you have Ancient Elf, and then you have um, uh, Silent Suzuka. And that's it. Like King Elephant is just a, just a gold, super cheap. So yeah, we're gonna end the video there. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, let me know if you'd like to see any other particular Shadowverse Evolved deck techs before we do our uh, 10 deck deep dive, or maybe even after the 10 deck deep dive. Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.